So the only thing bad about like resetting is because the one dairy is like world three, so it's like thirty seven minutes in or something like that. I just kinda don't wanna have to reset to that. That and it's one weapon cutscene. Which is the weapon I'm picking up anyway. Getting better at the slide hops to a degree. It's a good grab. My gold. I have a, the weirdest hold on my joystick right now. It's like in the middle of my finger torp.
Oh. Does add bomb in the pool, but I could care less. I'm not worrying about that right now. Okay, well, now he's at garden again. How come I got it last run, like, no problem, and then now he's saying, nah. Maybe I just need to take it wider. Excuse me. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, I just had to burp. I messed up turtle pretty bad. Or rather, turtle effed me up. No. You don't want it in that stage yeah, again. I could go alive. I was sitting here, like, talking with Mantel. Yeah? I just, like, haven't, <laughs> like, went live. Yeah? You doing more hand up? Yeah. Seems a little better.
Bro. Already losing time to this split. Holy frick. Dude. I can't keep dropping my fire like this. I think I'd try and lose my fire here. Nice. Got it. Also, I saw that IC posted in the group chat. grip of my controller.
Torp, you should post that as an announcement in the Discord. What? Your video. No. In the Rack Discord? Yeah, man. No. You can at least put it in there. Like in general, maybe. Joking. Fractioned. Fractioned. That's how it's going to get me. That last touch to killed. I'm sorry. The fact that my health is in the red kind of is off-putting because I just keep hearing ba da da Like you get it Kirby, you're hungry.
Cool. Should be food on the way. Or not. Could have been better. As long as I don't lose my power up here, we're good. Said so if I don't lose my power up here. Didn't go far enough. Not as clean. <laughs> Not as clean as last time. <laughs> Some would say anti clean. AKA dirty. And the dirt is very dirty.
Bro, that barely hit me, and I still lost time to it. Because I dropped a tornado. I definitely think I'm losing time on this level. Even though it's like 47 seconds of time save on there. That's definitely a placebo. Oh yeah. an interesting thing that he brought up though hmm the concept of rivalry yeah I, I just kind of like hopped in the rabbit hole with Manto about like discussing like how people interpret the word rivalry a little bit too figuratively sometimes because like he's saying that rivalry has like a a generally negative connotation, which is why when people say friendly rivalry, it kind of cancels it out. I guess. Um, I guess in that sense, like, I understand where people can see that rivalry does have a negative context because, like, that's kind of like, usually, when, at least in Ratchet, when people think rivalry, they think of Zen Moscato back in the day. Yeah. Whereas, like, I know my own interpretation differs, and uh, I can kind of see it as two competitors, like, whose stories intersect. Like, on the way to the same goal. You know? Yeah. And neither interpretation is wrong. It's like, in that sense, like, because I, I would consider us in the sense, like, on the purest level, like, competitors going for the same goal. Yeah. I would consider you and me rivals in Tools of Destruction, but, like, at the end of the day, speedrunning also just, we also don't look at speedrunning competitive, we look, we look at it as cooperatives of the same goal. Yeah. It's more so like, hey, have you gotten X thing yet? Or Torp, when are you submitting for GDQ? <laughs> I already submitted. I know. But you, you, you know what I'm getting at.
just like in general, like egging each other on to do our best. Like, that's the best thing you could want in a speed game. Is having people that want you to push. That are trying to help you. Yeah, I'm gonna pick up Tornado and, uh... After Tropic, I could care less, but the potential time loss I'm saving on not doing a mix. A mix that has, one, been failed by me many a times, and two, takes forever to actually set up. Because it's on a rotating platform. So to hell with the normal setup. But yeah. In terms of like Todd, we both just want to see the time get pushed down. And that's where it can be like really helpful to both of us. Just know the other one's like watching the other. Yeah. I definitely shouldn't have been hit by that wind, but I did, apparently. When I get mad at him, he's wispy. Skipping the blueprint because Alphalyn wants me to grab them for some reason. But grabbing them is slow. Whispered Woods is giving you trouble? No. More like Gave. Would you like to switch off a of wild mode? Or switch on to wild mode? Nah. I prefer not to. Oh, did the game actually try to ask you to do that if you're doing too good? Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of epic. It normally does after the after Gormando or Tropic. Honestly, <laughs> you know how like some games say like an easy mode if like the game's too hard for you. Yeah. Maybe the devs intended us to play Kirby on Spring Breeze mode. <laughs> Honestly, that did not take too much time. It was like, oh, hey, you unlocked the tornado. Oh, you want tornado? Here you go. Dude, this feels so much more clean already.
and before all the haters come and be like, why are you using, or why do you pick up a uh, tornado early? Comfort to play, right? So, I mean, that and also, like... I honestly think if you're learning something at first, I do think comfort to play is a valid thing to do. Well, tornado is fast to a degree as well. It's just a matter of how I went and got Tornado, instead of mixing to get Tornado. Which is still valid. Bro, hop on the rocket please, Kirby. Thank you. Oh, like, I think in the sense, like... Like, rivalry... That yeah, rivalry technically still has like some sort of degree of competitive feeling about it. Like, I think the concept of like competition as a I should go live. Actually, I have not went live yet. Just do it, Torb. Cause like I can I can continue this discussion when I go live. Yeah. Honestly, I saved about thirty seconds there doing tornado early. Yo, sixteen seven Button, don't run away from me. It's rude. Take the cardboard cutout, please. Hmm. 
We should probably go jump over in Fear's server or something like that, because we can open the we, we can open the pit again. That was fun. What do you mean the pit? Uh VC. I always I don't know mm. why, but I just always call VCs like the pit. Alright, I'm gonna jump over into your server for that. Gotcha. Oh, that's a slow tornado. Yo. Yo. Jay and... Oh, um, you... Howdy. I forgot to freaking split. <laughs> I stay over these Ardolis splits and everything. Yo, conspire. How you doing? Thank you for freaking eight months. Honestly? Pretty alright. It is currently April 1st here, and no joke, I am live right now. Are you? Are you actually live? Or Are is you this sure? your doppelganger? True. What if the entire world is just of one person's imagination? Like, what if this was all like a movie? Like the Truman Show. Ow, my neck. Ow, my other neck. Which part? Alright. Oh, I actually need to get the right layout. Hold on. Open layout. There we go. We now have our sound. Yo, nice. Yo, how's the tear flipping going there for you, Frongo? <sighs> Gotta like stretch my wrist out and everything as well. Feeling pretty decent. As the kids would say, I'm feeling pretty decent nuts. Is that what the kids say? Not at all. I don't know what these kids are saying anymore with their TikToks and their Fortnites. With their disco falling ways. Good luck seeing everything in one sitting. Plot twist, in the middle of this run, I'm going to stand. And therefore, it won't be in one sitting. I was gonna boost across, Yo, but... Cheers to the GL, though. <laughs> no! Alright, just for you, I'll keep sitting. Honestly, I really shouldn't bend the machine. Guy. How is everyone doing, though? Have I been burned by too many Yo, rounds? Yo, first try clip? Yo! Never mind. This truly is April Fool's Day, because that attempt on Carwin was a fucking joke. Do you mind if it's standing? It was more so I was just kind of like cracking the joke, but I really, my, like, my setup, if you even want to call it that, is I'm sitting on my bed. My laptop is connected through, like, a wire that kind of holds it in place, so I really don't have any room to move around when I stream. And, like, my desk is literally right up next to my bed. That sounds like the kind of thing you made fun of me at one point, Torp. Well, you see, I really just don't have an actual setup. Hmm. Yo, Matthias. No one said ketamine. Yet. I was actually... And Manto's stream like a few minutes ago, we were getting on to the topic of like rivalry. Uh, ketamine's like a re it's, it's like horse tranquilizer, but people use it as like drugs. Hmm. We were on getting onto the topic of rivalry, and I think like 
Um, rivalry is a very interesting thing to talk about, in the sense that I actually want to ask what y'all's opinions on like, what do you think rivalry is, and do you think it has like a positive or negative context to it? Because like I have my specific thoughts that I was talking about with it, but I'm curious to hear what people would want to would want to say about that. It's like, the way that I see rivalry is, at, I think rivalry, in my honest opinion, isn't inherently negative, but a lot of cases do kind of present it in a negative light. I think rivalry kind of comes down to two people whose stories intersect. Like, I think it's more so, two, like, yeah, two people whose stories intersect, so it's like, you can't necessarily, I don't think you can necessarily call someone that, like, you two just are... It's... Similar stories, at least. Because, like, otherwise I'd be, like, saying... God. I don't want to sound like I'm putting someone down in terms of, like, skill level or anything like that. Oh, um, no. But... It's like saying, say, me and Psyche had a rival, like, have a rivalry going on whenever, for example, Psyche does not even run Todd at the moment. It's gotta be people who have some degree of a similar story. Or at least, in that sense, that are, like, pushing towards the same goal, but their stories intersect. It's gotta be two people that have both been bullied by Mobius. And in the sense of Todd, it was kind of like... We kind of are after the same goal. We're trying to get some really fast times. And I think it's more so how the competitors themselves conduct themselves Ow. around each other. That kind of dictates whether the rivalry is like a positive or negative one. And even still, I'd wait no. to say that the negative rivalry can still provide like... Some results. Like... We see open it all. I'm in... I'm in one with Killa. So it's like me and him right now just at the moment. I got ran over. Oh no. Twice. <laughs> and like... The way that I see it as though is like... It might also just be the view that I have. I see speedrunning like competition and speedrunning as two people working towards the same goal because like even though like two runners can compete for fast times I think the end goal that everyone wants to see from speedrunning is the collective goal of that time being pushed down. Yo, Yugi. And because of that, like, at least in speedrunning, rivalries aren't necessarily as... what you call it? Vitriolic. Like, that's the word I was looking for, is vitriolic. It sounds like, like an I alcoholic, also, but for victory. I also think that when it comes to rivalry in speedrunning, I think the rivalry, if there is any, should take place between the runners themselves, because viewers getting involved with it might not realize the impact they might have if they're asking someone just like, hey, someone beat your time, what are you going to do about it? Like... At the very least, like, it should be kind of assumed that they're going for is, like, a similar goal. Bro. Why is Claw being mean? And, like, like Yuki said, the speedrunners, at the very least, are going to be like, yay, number go down, in terms of time. Yeah. Oh, I got boxed. Oh my lord. Yo, Lordy, cool. how you going? I'm doing alright. I actually got a 240 last night, so I'm happy about that. We're talking about like how the concept of like rivalries when it comes to something competitive and whether or not like a rivalry can be something positive. Yeah. Also, <laughs> I need to be killer. 
I'm working on it. Need? Kill it very much, like... Still have the upper hand in that he just has had a lot more time with this category. I like how they use the word need. <laughs> in my case, like... It's just simply I need to clean up, like, my gameplay more. Yeah. Just a little bit of spit shine. And even still... I don't ever like to think anyone's, like, better than someone else when it comes to speedrunning, because, like, I think everyone's all capable of the same thing. I think I'm going to skip this mix, too, but, like, honestly. I don't like seeing speedrunning with, like, two people like, competing to see who's better. It's two people kind of trying to push at the same time. Besides being a stuttering fool trying to work... Oh, no. Alright, the hack that I did with mine is record paragraphs at a time. I mean, yeah, that's the and easiest like, way to do it. Export your best, like, your correct take. Honestly, the stuttering can even add a little bit of charm. Some people, like, see it as unprofessional, but at the same point, like, it shows that you're still kind of it working on it. Yo, who's that flying into the Coliseum? It's a weird, weird person with a mask. Oh no, it's it's that one character that they call what? Well, oh, what's his name? Metal Knight. Metal Knight? Oh no. Or sorry, Link Top. Um, really, it's up to you. And I think in that sense, like, I, it, yeah, I think it comes down to how you see the definition of rivalry. And not necessarily the definition, but your interpretation of the word of. And like, how that affects you. Yeah, and it's like also how you handle competition when it comes to something like that. Competitive. And I think, at least in that sense, while I don't consider myself competitive, it, it's not necessarily that I see competition as a bad thing or anything like that. It's more so my motivation for speedrunning comes intrinsically. And in that sense, it's for me, it's more about doing the best I can with my own abilities. And from there, like, if, I, if it just so happens to be the best in the game, so be it. It's not about controlling a pink puffball or, you know, running a furry game. Like, yeah, it's cool to, like, it's cool to, like, be the best in the game. Like, no one's going to argue on that. Oh, but, no, like, yeah. You get to brag to all your friends. In the sense, like, I still, like, even though I have three or four records in this game and I did hold the sweep, it was, if anything, the reason why I, like, even talk around the sweep so much is because I know it would be a thing other people would want to celebrate. I have I have pretty much only ever seen this as I need to fix my quick select. That's not what I've seen it as, but like I mean, being the third person ever to ha hold the sweep in Todd is still something that's... I, I don't know if I should say ever. By like, the third person that I know of that is help the sweep is still yeah. something that should be regarded as a good thing. Even if it was for a day. It was by all technicalities, so I won't really consider the sweep complete myself until I actually get it back now that the run has actually been optimized. Mm -hmm. Whether or not you feel comfortable in your optimization, that doesn't matter at the moment. It's just that the time actually has a notable majority of the time save available realized. Ooh, it might actually be quicker for me to pick up Crash on 4-2. Because then I wouldn't have any cutscene going into Dwaddle D's. And, like, in my sense, like, 
it's still notable that, like, in that sense, I've held, like, the fastest times in each of them. But, like, at the end of the day, it was more so I just wanted to do the best with what I could do. Like, my motivation for speed running is has never been extrinsic. Like, climbing the leaderboard can be cool, and, and, like, I think it's a valid motivation for people. It's just not my motivation. And that's fine, really. Sometimes it's just fun to do the fast. Yeah. And for a lot of people, yes. That and like, for me, the thing that I like more about speedrunning is I've been able to use crap. it as a mechanism for like my own personal growth. Like, not like content creator growth or like... I think just gaming too. I've literally learned like actual like life skills and I've actually been able to like own my mentality into other aspects of life beyond just playing some silly furry game fast. <laughs> so in that sense, I see speedrunning as an opportunity like, to learn to grow more than it's like to flex big size on someone else. I mean, that could be fun too, though. Like, it's the same reason... Like, I wouldn't say it's the same reason because it's kind of comparing apples and oranges, but it's like, it's in a sense... Where, uh, Haniwa was someone that, if you look at the top of the leaderboard, that doesn't tell the full story. They definitely could have been a real competitor. They were if a they very good to. runner in terms of like the strats that they were doing. They very much made a lot of the strats that people knew of a lot more viable. But you can even go and look at the Ratchet, like Ratchet Three Speed Dock. Haniwa's runs were almost more like an art than it was an actual speedrun. Well, Haniwa was also one of the only people that didn't hold a record in the category. And it was still enough influence to be mentioned. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, God. That was a baller tornado right there. And my honest opinion, I think Strat Hunters also do not get the, recogni the recognition they deserve. Oh, they don't. Like, that's why I've... That's why I'm honestly kind of glad that, like, Yugi was the one that found a lot of the file manipulation stuff. And really, I should have made an addendum to that video upon the advent of... Hundo. When it's early. I think, honestly, what I might do is I might actually make a video about Yugi specifically at some point because that I know you're I know you're right here in chat Yugi so I'm kind of putting you on blast but honestly yes just say that you changed future is an understatement future was kind of I don't want to say a dying breed but a very very less known on the brink of extinction breed. I wouldn't say on the brink of extinction either. It's basically like we're our own like separate little lunch table that like no one really interacts with, but we're like still just kind of chill with it. Like, I think my own personal goal, if I were to look at like, if I were to actually factor in analytics and stream growth and stuff, I think my own personal goals, I want Future to have the same respect as OG3, or at least something close to it. And I feel like in a sense I'm like doing pretty alright with it, because my time with with Future might pass at some point. Let's, let's face it, like, I've been eyeing other games and stuff because it's like... There's going to be a time where I think I will be finished with Tools of Destruction for the foreseeable future. It's kind of the same thing as what happened with Going Commando. Going Commando was a little bit more of, like, different circumstances. Yeah. But I think at least what I would want to do is, like, for the people that, like, more actively run it, I actually want to be able to try to shine a light on them more. Like, I think that's another reason why I'm also eyeing, future, like, more future games, just because the stuff that I've been able to see in, like, the other games has genuinely been fascinating. Honestly, becoming from not just a Todd runner, but like just a future runner in general, 
it very much shows a different light on everything. Like, and like from where Ace like... has changed, and for the better, I'll say that much. This is someone coming from OG3 as well, you gotta remember that. Yeah. I was like an OG3 Andy for three years straight. It just shows that people can change. <laughs> like, I still... I still think people are perfectly valid to like specific games in the series. I mean, like, like the speed, like the casual games themselves, the speedruns are also very different between the games. But I do at least want to do my part to show that like future has its own like unique identity. Oh yeah. And I would say in that sense, it's kind of like how Going Commando has went from, like, Fear's reputation of it being Double Charge City. I'd say it's actually a really good thing that gives it its own separate identity from, uh, from Ouya. Mm -hmm. Even if they have similar movement engines. Okay, I need to remember to pick up the tomato. Pick up the tomato. Pick up the tomato. I do think that there is a little bit less of an awareness on future. And... That's why I do hope to, like, try to at least increase the awareness more with what I can do. And if I'm being honest, I do want to make more video content that does focus on, like, future trilogy stuff. Simply because... It, it needs more attention, really. Oh, yeah. Honestly, it's why I've always kind of wanted... Whoops, capture taken. It's why I've always kind of wanted in the future have more representation in... Uh... Frick, that's fine. I think another thing I might also try and pair a bit of light on the future. Zem. Yeah. I don't want to put him on blast in that sense, like, in any sense. But, like, Zem's bop project, me too. Yeah. Like, even if it may not have been, like, the same sort of numbers that he pulled doing OG3, but that was still more eyes on that, because more people understanding how the run works. Yeah. And in that sense, like, also being able to see Zen practice some of the stuff in Nexus might also give someone else who might be learning the game a little bit more respect on the things that they can do with group. No, definitely. And if anything, the fact that Zem got world record as quick as he did in that, I would genuinely say it could be an inspiration for others to try to pick up the game for themselves. And I think it's only going to happen the same way with Acet Tools, and even Quest for Booty got a bit of attention because of Zem grinding. Yeah. Like, thoughts that people might have on Zem aside, it was still a net positive in that at least it brought more eyes onto the game. That's where I feel like even, like, negative motivation can be good motivation. As, like, it's partially ends justify the means. Like, while the motivation itself can be bad in some senses, like, the case of, like, the Zem and Scotto beef, like, back in the day, Oh. I was wrong, but I still got it. <laughs> okay, I need to get mortars. Honestly, that's fine. Is that needle? Hmm. Either way. Kaboom. Like, Rack Champs even did that? Like, I know some people had their opinions on, like, stuff in future, but... Even the Rack Champs tournament, like, also provided another light on future and if it may not have been another light it's at least awareness and like I'm not gonna sit here and try to predict like how Zem is like going to do on like the bot project it's not my place to judge his skill because what he seeks to improve on he will improve on and he will work towards that but I do think at least the process of him going through some of these games 
simply like at the very least by consequence of him being the largest ratchet streamer and also to the degree that um he doesn't want to just be the ratchet streamer anymore the fact that yeah. he wants to branch out into most playstation like just become like the playstation guy is really nice because that will also help broaden the horizons for every other game every yeah. other game that is included in that will it's get a like boost to it's kind of like in the sense where like ricky's been making a lot more videos that raise awareness to other games and from there runners of other games sense it's not like we're like someone's trying to take another person's cake it's that we're bringing more cake to the table no i want somebody's cake is it chocolate banana like at the bare cake? minimum oh, a lot of awareness for other games means that there's just more content to go around for everybody what kind of cake torp i think everyone runs in some category there's so many weird torps with it um there hasn't really been any discussion for future runs on emulator yet. More so because we just haven't had someone do a run on emulator. But it is something we would have to sit down and like learn things about. Like that in RPCS3 kind of sucks. Not gonna it lie. On that because like there's certain games that it does still run by. Like, Deadlock allows full use for RPCS3. How the Ratchet community has been handling it is through the method of time gates. Um, where up to a certain point runs on emulator and stuff are allowed, with there being an upper li like an upper limit on or I guess lower limit in terms of speed on time. That was faster. I would be open to accepting it. It just comes down to like how people would want to specify rules for it simply because there just hasn't been a run submitted to actually discuss rules with. It's not any sort of like verification type of issue. It's like, what is it? It's not like a lack of trust. It's more so that it's a precedent hasn't been set yet. So you kind of would be the one that sets the trend there. And even still like, All right, I need to watch what I'm saying now. That way I don't spoil anything. I'm gonna keep my the... words very vague. You got, the... you'd be proud of me, Killa. I got the Geo Laser. Yo, nice. Actually, no, you shouldn't be proud of me. That's literally the standard. You did the thing you're supposed to. Yeah, well, basically we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. At the very least, like, the emulator time gates that we have tend to be enough for you to like grind for a pretty decent time but like enough that it would, it would establish enough where it's like that you, it incentivizes getting the official to do it really yo manto cheers for the raid yeah yo, raided nice by a toe things. by a man's toe a man's toe? That's weird. Yo, Kuzkowski, cheers to the gel. Yeah, I, I actually ended up continuing the discussion of, like, rivalry and speedrunning over here. And, like, I do think at the end of the day it just comes down to how you interpret the term of rivalry. Yo, ass time. I mean, you can interpret, like, a ten-year-old on a Pokemon journey. Yo, Scotto. You need a vampire Tifa emote? Yo. It's weird with Aston Todd because how do you exit X and be on M? That's the other thing. Oh, well, yeah. I think we might actually, like, 
we might actually have to just allow emulator outright simply because they can't do they can't do ads. So they're literally time gated in the sense that they literally <laughs> can't do ass. Oh no, they literally can't PB <laughs> or hit the times. I didn't think about it, it that way. That a that actually might be grounds for a no ass category. But I think my honest belief is, I think the world record for something should be on some sort of official hardware. Oh yeah. The exception to it is if the game is less, like, less than accessible. AKA, if its name is... Something like Rule of Rose, like, where that's quite literally a copy of it runs you a thousand dollars. Yeah, no. I would say very much emulator there. Push the tornado. Push the tornado. <laughs> Or in something like Earthbound, even. Well, Earthbound's coming to Switch now. So... Yes. So, like, Virtual Console is recognized as those things, but Emulator is allowed even further, typically, because, like, an SNES cart... Stupid expensive. Yeah. What is this, some duping nonsense? Um, basically, we're trying to stack, like, loads. Loads? Okay, so we're not trying to stack loads, but we're trying to, like... Pause the game mid-load to create a file. I forgot you're on, like, Raycar. <laughs> I should probably update that command for and the 100% use. Yeah. Um, like... It... I have... I'm very weird in that I have I have some very traditional views when it comes to speedrunning in that like the whole official hardware type of deal. But I do think there at least should be enough of an entryway for emulator runners to get the hang of the game. That at the very least that they can get something decent before committing further. I mean hell Todd was almost on a JPPS3. <laughs> Only on JPPS3. Fun. Yeah. And I was like, I don't want to just be myself over here. So I'm like, I am fine with like altering versions of the game to some degree, as long as it doesn't actually cut out anything that you actually involves activity. In the case in point of Tools of Destruction, we allow the use of Multiman to delete the cutscenes that would be skipped with the yeah. JP NTSC, what you call it, like the JP NTSC U thing. Simply because, like, the things that get skipped are things that you literally just do nothing during anyway. Mm hmm That's one of the reasons why I don't think a no-ass category would typically exist. Is simply because the things that you skip... Like, technically, yes, you're skipping gameplay, but it's not such a way that it really changes how it's run. The only notable thing that you could do mention that ass would affect would be in any percent... The Shard Reaper. Yeah. And that's like the only thing. It doesn't significantly change the way you play a game. Compared to something like how Full File Manip quite literally lets you go from Kerwin to Fast 2. two. Yeah. Or something like how IMG quite literally like you mm. skip straight through the game. Oh, that's not even the right spot to split in. I think it would be funny to speed on this game with Tachyon T closing in the background since emulators are a bit unstable. I think at the very least, it's like something good to just try out tech with. Like, my best advice when it comes to speedrunning is just jump in. Find a way to jump in and just give it a go. You don't have to commit to it if you don't. Oh, no, you don't. <sighs> yeah. It makes me really happy that Sunshine Runners came to the resolution that they did with Act File, because it was the perfect like that. It was, it was the like middle ground. 
you. And it's also because speedrunning as a hobby also isn't entirely just purely go fast. No. There is going to be some degrees of quality of life there to make things easier for the runner to continue doing what they do or to facilitate better what they do. And like, especially if it's literally skipping nothing, right, in terms of nothing actually being input intensive, like, then, ooh, doing everything in one sitting, I am this man. Meaty gold. But like, speedrunning as like a sort of, as a hobby, it is, in a lot of ways purely go fast but speedrunning as like a community type of deal is more so just like when I have to speedrunning is a balance of three parts speedrunning is a balance of speed of course you have to go fast in your favorite game I didn't fix it it's also much. that of skill and entertainment I was hoping I thought you had to it. be good at speedrunning exclamation point video <laughs> oh, no, no. Warning. It's a very good video. You might want to watch it multiple times to fully understand. So, like, speedrunning isn't, like, when it comes to, like, the hobby as well, like, showing it to other people, especially in, like, a spectator sense, speedrunning is more than just speed. Oh, yeah. Like... Speedrunning is usually some balance of speed, skill, and entertainment. And sometimes the entertainment aspect can be carried by other parts of the run. Case in point, one of the reasons why people love Rack 2 and 3 so much is because they're balls hard speedruns in terms of like, there's a lot of basic tech skill needed to just do basic tech in the game. So the entertainment part of it, if like the streamer is not as entertaining. At the very least, it is, it's is—it's got a little bit more interest in the sense of the game is balls hard and it's really cool seeing people grow in, in a balls hard game. Cool. Like, that same balance is why... I do think that glitchless categories do have a place in a lot of games, but I don't think every single one needs a glitchless category. Yo, what's up, Manto? The capture, I gotta say, though, this made Seeing you, like, uh, invest into, like, speedrunning and, come on, capture card and stuff, it's actually really cool to see. Glitches is stuff we do with glitches. The reason why I do think Glitchless does have a problem is because it's a very gray subject to define. It's a very complex thing, or at least relatively complex, that it's simply not black and white as to... Yeah, what class is the glitch? That's a good question, because people are going to disagree on that. Oh, yeah. The interpretation that I go off of is the one from the Easy Escape video from, like, 2018. Where a glitch is something unintended in the game used for an unintended result. So in the case of, like, Clearly, I'm trying to clip through the wall. And that's not necessarily how the game works. Oh, dude, that was definitely intended. Does Rack 2 Neutral Tech count as a, grit, a glitch? Some people would say no. I'm one of them. Like, the, the components of that are you're entering first person, like, coming to a standstill. And technically... You're not, you don't move in first person. 
So, in a sense, the game is running perfectly fine. That while your stick is neutral, you're holding L1. <laughs> yeah, and I just... Open the door, open the door. Yeah, I'm just gonna honestly reset this run. Love it when I gold more. This is what happens when you practice Torp. Who would have known? Oh yeah, in the case of the pack, it's like the pack mechanics where it's like you can quite literally like just carry your speed from a walk into a side flip. Yeah, that's you, sometimes you quite literally can't avoid it. And I would wager to say that the neutral is not a glitch simply because it's also just kind of how the speed works in that game. People think it's a glitch because no one's going to think to, like, jump out of a charge to preserve their speed or something like that. Or jump as they, like... What am I trying to say? Falling neutral stuff, for example. I don't think I've gotten like, any In that sense, things. I see the smart use of game mechanics. And you can use game mechanics in, in smart ways to achieve unintended results. Yeah, I think those, like, it's gotta be ones that, like, radically shift the way that the game is played, and not in a way that feels neuter. The issue with something like Rack 2 Glitchless is, it technically was still very neuter. Like, it, there was new strats and everything that were found specifically for the category. Hell, even the armor strat was actually found because of Glitchless. I can agree with that statement. Yo, we got fast and fiery. Actually, this one's not a watch. Glitchless is not that it's arbitrary. Like, someone can argue that it is, and in some ways, yeah, in some ways it is. But it goes back to that thing that I was talking about that Maybe. speedrunning is some. Why did I just throw another Groovatron? Is that speedrunning has become a hobby of a mix of like entertainment and like speed and skill? So, in that sense, something like Glitchless does cater more to the entertainment side of it, simply because it is also a little bit more congruent to the way that people do have fun with the game, usually. Yeah. Quite literally, something like the first-person wall climb, Insomniac literally told us to play the game that way. By leaving it in in Red Label, when they were already aware of a lot of other patches and stuff that happened in it, they were quite literally saying, hey, go free with this. Also, you know, there's wrench also, boosting and Rift Apart. Yeah, I was about to say, <laughs> there's also the subset of, like, the whole glitches type of deal that end up becoming acknowledged by the developer and become features of the game. By that extent, a, a Rift Apart run would actually, for a glitchless run would allow wrench boosting. Like, by that logic. Alright. World 6. Let's go. 
Yeah, in that sense, a Rift Apart Glitchless run would actually allow wrench boosting. If we're going off of strictly the whole, like, developer intent method. It's... It's a very complex thing that, like, again, there's no clear answer to Come it. on. Add a wall, protect the smash ultimate. Yo, what if? The closest thing we have to that is the funny thing in Smash 4, where you, like, charged up the Pac-Man forward smash or something like that. And when you pause the game, he kind of just started going. Hmm. Turns out I didn't need that much height. People that'll argue that damage boosting is a glitch. It's like I don't know. Speedrunning, like the rules of speedrunning as, as a whole, are also just super arbitrary because it's community agreed upon rules. Yeah. And like even still, one can argue that's not necessarily a correct way, but it's the perceived normal way that we do things. Why else do you think there's discussions about, like, certain rules in games? Is... There's no correct way... And even still, like, you have to, like, completely specify the rule set of a category. You got four there, so I need to... Get one more somewhere. It's definitely not in this next one. We're losing time here, but... We have a lot of time to save on Creeley. I'm really keeping this run alive just to try Creeley. I think it's just going to be Beast Council, honestly. That's the easy one. Alright. We got the piss suit. I know that time doesn't really look that good. No, I keep doing that. Okay, so kill. What? Does pirate and turret count for... No. Smoge. I told you this before. Time safe here, but that's fine. This room could have used it. Like, what are you gonna argue about with Todd when it comes to, like, that's not gonna make it? When it comes to quite literally a ship bounce. Like, the thing that we're doing is. We're abusing the high jump, like, we're, we're using the high jump to jump. And it's literally how the game handles the physics of it. Like, at its bare bones, the ship jump is quite literally, we high jump, like, 
off of our ship. Yeah, standing on the ship isn't a glitch, nor is high jumping, but standing on the ship and, and then, then high jumping. jumping, yeah. Like, there's people that are gonna be like, oh yeah, that's a glitch, but it's like, my brother in Christ. <laughs> You're literally just doing a normal movement method. How is this just... gold egg? Super small. There, I see. I saw you. Thank you, whoever dragged. It was me. Thank you, Quilla. How are you today? I'm hanging in there. Down. Kirby being smudge. Honestly... <sighs> Yeah, like tornado is not that worth it. I can live without tornado. I wanted tornado. I can live because people tornado. are gonna disagree when it comes to something like that. I think something like an exploit is using intended game mechanics in unintended ways, such as the ship bounce would be something more of an exploit. I mean, it's just using physics to your advantage. The nano swarmers have collision, but the nano swarmers have collision against this wall. Therefore, the nano swarmers push you through wall. Like, one can argue that wall clipping is unintentional because you're using them in such a way. Like, technically the intended use of the nanosomers are to be a weapon that you can deploy and have fight for you. So in that sense, it is kind of going against that. But, like, I can understand an argument to be made about that. I'm not saying I agree or disagree with that point, but there is, that there is an argument to be made. There's an argument for everything, if you think I know. There's also like if what, you can there are also gray areas of enough. Mechanic. Like you know how the crouch stab is bugged in frickin' Ocarina of Time? Oh yeah. You know how the uh decks are good. That was just an oversight by the developers. Well, I mean the stick but, is like, as the, long as a master sword, so obviously it does master sword damage. The crouch yeah, stab, if I recall correctly in Ocarina of Time. What it does is it stores, it's prop. It's got a property where it stores the damage of the last move you used. That's you are you are correct thing. on that. So you can do a jump slash, and then your crouch stabs do the damage of a jump slash. And you do a jump slash with a Deku stick, and get master sword I, damage by crouch stabbing. I think that's an oversight. They didn't do the calculations for that. Like, in the sense. Nope. Like, that's even still a gray area. Like, would that technically be banning glitches because the move itself literally doesn't work? I would say no. Oversight by the little health doesn't seem like an issue. Oh, I totally just blew up that thing. Also, Tor, I love your new video. I Thank learned you. how to become a world record holder. As you should. The was... thing I like about something like that is... I like that I was able to make still something, like, technically true. Yeah. I now own 37 records. Like, it's a tried and true video. If you want to be good at a game, you gotta practice. <laughs> and hydrate. What's oh, and practice, also don't give up or something, I guess. Hydration is more important than practice, because if you don't hydrate, oh, you Oh shit, die. kill is the exception to the rule. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I've broken your April Fool's Day joke, Torp. How does it make you Isn't feel? Zero glitch. Uh, technically. I would, t in in a technical sense, yes. The game clearly seemed to have never been meant to actually go past 255. But in the same sense, like. Why am Again, I... that's also di like very difficult to like prove or disprove developers' intent there. Why am I saving so much time there? Because you're a jamer. The frick! I While usually Killers have being people fact check me when it comes to Ocarina of Time and like things like that. I've never actually played a Zelda game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not... Torp, you should know. I know the Zelda facts. 
Well, I got you. I lied. Well, I lied. Being the, a only, the only Zelda game I've ever played is Four Swords Anniversary Edition. Okay, but that one. I mean, did you at least beat Vadi? I think so. Did you remember that his name was Vadi? I thought it was Ganon. No. Oh, <laughs> Not in that one. I've only ever played Breath of the Wild, sorry. I'm gonna kill you both. <laughs> well, while you're jamming, I'm playing Genshin. Torp needs to complete Kirby. That way I can talk Kirby. Poyo! Yeah, how it, you doing? That's Torp? all you really need to know is Poyo. I'm gonna spoil the game. Poyo, Poyo, Poyo. You Kaboom. See, Kirby eats food. Kirby is part of the game. Kirby is a pink yeah, guy and he's very, very cute. Level. I forgot to claim all my things from my Asian account. I have 1300 primos. I now. see. Let's do pools. But yeah, like I I've, I've never understood like the thing as well. I I genuinely think the position of glitchless, like, in speedrunning and, like, how glitches are cheating, I think comes from a perspective of ignorance, because, like, how do I put it? Because it's such a gray area, and, like, because the culture of speedrunning is just to, like, go, go fast, fast. And have you actually, like, dictate what is or isn't a glitch, let alone the legitimacy of it, that it's not a far cry to just allow everything, and if it's something that so drastically changes the way the category is played, then... Hold on, Torp. What do you have against Far Cry? It's actually a pretty decent game. Then, like, if there's going to be something that radically changes the way that you play the game in terms of, like, the speedrun even, you're always going to have a new category that bans that. Case in point, look at Defeat Ganon. Defeat Ganon literally exists because it was the, like, it served the purpose of being the old, like, Brawn War Penny Percent route. I forgot to sell the Soul and Sargasso again. How dare. Because Credits Warp was, like, Credits Warp due to SRM got found. I think. Again, my knowledge on the Zelda history is a little okay. lacking. So, Zelda 1, I cannot help. I can't help with Zelda 1. My Zelda 1 facts are no point no. All I know is you need a torch to burn a tree. <laughs> tree! Yeah! How did that throw my Groovatron? That's um, fine. easy, need, it I need, did. I need to leave the prison anyway, so I can come get the Enforcer on the way back. Bro! Kirby! Jump! Kerbal. I can honestly get Fish drop it alongside Gun drop it, so I don't need to wait for it on Core Dog. <laughs> like, and the, the thing is, is like, I also have never understood the perspective that people say, like, oh, these people are, like, have no respect for how the game is played, when quite literally, the people that speed on these games tend to be the people that have the most hours in the game. Yeah. And then from there, probably also have some of the most grasp on how freaking the game works. Come on, I missed this yesterday too. Okay. That's a good claw. Never touch again, can I see the the game? Yeah, I feel like that. Not to oh, mention, speed running tends like Tornado. You can argue from that sense that like a challenge run. Like if you're gonna argue like the whole developer intent thing. Then why the fuck do you watch damage in this round? Why the fuck do you watch challenge runs? Like, yeah. Yo, cheers to the red, Nick. Hey, Marathon. Like, in that sense, if you're trying to argue the whole developer intent thing, then why? Then, like, I'm going to play Devil's Advocate to that. Then, if you have a problem with the way the game is being played, don't watch challenges, challenge runs. Don't watch Play it yourself. Don't watch freaking... Speedruns. 
speedruns. If you're so worried about how like developer intent in a game is. Hell, most developers enjoy watching their speed, like their game be run, their game There's getting attention. I think IGN has speedrun, uh, developers react to speedruns. Yeah. And like... And Insomniac as well. Food. Oh yeah. Insomniac. Zem literally Happy. went to Insomniac. Yeah. There was someone else as well. I, th I think it was Jeremy Thompson actually went to Insomniac as well to show off Spyro. Yeah. Truth. Yeah, like... Developers make jokes like, oh, we should patch that out. And like... I agree with the premise of like... Do patch out something that can mess with a casual playthrough, but if it has no bearing on casual players whatsoever, then no harm, no foul. Yeah. Wasn't there a developing company that Yo, actually man, ran back an update because it affected speedrunning so much? Insomniac. It was Insomniac. Uh, the planet I was just giving PS4. Ah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It got patched yeah. out. People asked about it because it was a thing that casual probably weren't going to come across anyway. And they patched it back in. Yo. <laughs> but that's only useful for speedrunners. What are we on about? Glitch, uh, glitches and speedrunning. Do I take this run? I mean, do you? Yes, I guess I will. Six, uh, one, two... This and, and like, more. the thing that comes from speedrunning is, I feel like if anything, speedrunning tends to be the end result of a video game, because, like, at least at the very least, challenge runs are part of that, where you're trying to bring new life into, into, like, a, a game, because, yeah, you can do a God of War playthrough and play, like, say, each of the individual costumes or something like that, or, like, on the, each of the individual difficulties. But when it comes to something like that, you might just run out. When it comes to something like speedrunning or even challenge runs, it very much becomes something... Oh, bonk. I feel like you could argue that as well with like modded playthroughs, say Terraria, GTA 5. Yeah, and people do have a lot of fun when it comes to something like that as well. It's The draw that comes from something like that as well is the ability to play a game in a different way is a way to breathe new life into the game. I think I just got hit. Okay, I need to apparently just play this. Like, for people that have played like games for so long... I can understand like, that. Like, if it's something you don't feel like you yourself would enjoy, that's honestly perfectly fine. I'm more so kind of, like, speaking to the crowd that do try to push the whole glitches and cheating thing down someone else's throat. Like, Top, you've played Todd for, what, over two, three thousand hours? I wouldn't be surprised if that's a number. Doing a damageless or no hit run. It's just a way to revitalize your fun yeah. for the game. That's that's literally what I did with Ouya Deathless last time. Why game. am I failing this? It's what I did with Rack Curse 4 and my no hit run. I didn't take a hit, period. Like I actually want to do Todd damage at some point. Because like I think it would actually be something kinda of cool. And I think it's one of the only Ratchet games okay, that I can well. feasibly do a damage list category. You can do it in PS4, it's just, yeah, the ship section would be the worst. Ship sections and, like, Rack 1, like, the issue with the OG3 is Giant Clank. Oh, 100%. There's just so much natural things that will just hit you, that you can't control. The ships in Rack 2 aggro based on the fact that they're doing damage to you. Deadlock might be able to do it. You it could do Ouya if you... It depends also on if you count the sleeping gas runs, because I'm pretty sure one of the challenges in, like, that's on the required that's path. That's so right much zone, time loss. Requires you to do that, and if you're counting it as something like that. I feel like you might be able to do Ouya if you ignore the ranger missions. 
Well, there's you no might, fun in that. You might be able to. You would have to ignore ranger missions, though, because turret command on Kerwin, like, Urban Storm... Oh, my Kenny would be a fucking bitch. No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't? Um... Specific, you're thinking about turret command, aren't you? No, I was thinking Mercadia in general. That's not really the... Mercadia's not really okay. that bad. I, I would never consider Confuzzler Gas anything. I'd say you'd have to take damage from an enemy. Because, like, someone... Like, the issue, like... The first three games ha have things that literally require you to get damage for them to, like, actually properly fight. Um... Deadlock's big issue is that of semantics because, um, mainly with sleeping gas rounds. Yeah, but the rules you set are yours. Okay, never mind. The run's dead. Uh... Right. That's fine. I walk straight into a laser. I gotta laser the right guy first from now on. What happens? But, yeah. Semantics have a challenge. I got hit on a degree. Ooh. Sleeping gas is optional. You might be able to do it with uh, deadlock then. I'll be honest, I'm not e I wasn't even attached to that run. That's fair. Y you did forget to hand in the souls. Yeah. Plus a lot of other things I wasn't here for. Like, it was still a decent try and everything considered, but like, eh, it happens. Unlike me, who's losing a lot of time because of the skip that was free, like, is now not, for some the reason. Big, uh, the big thing about Todd 100% now is... You gotta be willing to lose a run in the first hour and change. All the way from from Rakar, all the way till you finish the Sindhu. Oh yeah, you gotta pretty much own it. You have to be prepared to lose the run at any point in there. Hell, my philosophy when it comes to Ratchet speedrunning is don't take any split for granted. Going Commando is like one of the big, yeah, one of the biggest examples of that where you can quite literally, I've quite literally lost a no IMG run to every single split in GC, <laughs> even through this. <sighs> Not even a quad with any percent? That's like the one exception. <laughs> but you can still technically lose a lot of time to like say forgetting to go to Aquados. Going for safety. Mainly because I'm losing would be a lot of time here. I guess it would be interesting damageless. I think you could do it. Oh, Unless... No, I don't think the sleeping gas arenas are part of that. No, Argorian is completely optional. I think besides the bronze cup. Are you joking? Would just that be the most ankle like the is could, like, good. I mean... You don't think you killed a run to hide out? Okay, listen here now, Sag Bean. I'm gonna put my two cents in. I've never lost a run. Okay, well... Did you crash the game <laughs> on any percent of Quados? What if? I've never lost a run because I've never run. Like, oh wait, no. What did you? What? What did you think I was gonna say, Sad Bean? I tried to stop the gun, you. Because it saved so much time there, and said I lost so much. Next run. I still got eight. I wasn't gonna say that. I am one of the opinion that I do think people should practice opt like optimal strats, but they don't need to do them immediately. Mm, I very much am of the opinion that if you're newer to something, very much play for something that will you know you can get through the run with first and like learn the optimal strats. So when you do finally have to use the optimal strats, you're not like left in the dark about it. Yeah. I ended up doing that for, um... Thing is, with Kirby, it's a lot of that. It's a lot of adaptability. <laughs> you lose a power-up? Oh, you gotta know how to 
back it up or your run's pretty much dead. I ended up doing that similar thing with uh, Snaggle Beast on PS4. I didn't know you could uh, sheep apply it, so I ended up just using the most damaging weapon. It worked, but they adapt. Most people don't know that you can uh, sheep the like, thug. For example, people people still reload smog, and honestly, that's perfectly fine. Like, backtrack is not an easy thing to learn. It's very much a trial and error to learn. Yeah, that's why you have your splits uh, named, right? I'm talking What's about uh, going commando, like, smog. Oh. Like, I don't think one should, like, time gate themselves on the strat that you do. Like, I do think, like, basically, only go for the new things if you need them, but it's still good to practice them. Like, for example, like, I was starting to practice some, like, not really that one, I was building my engine plus mile. I got acquainted with Dino Grind there just because it's part of the process for making a file that's runnable for NG Plus. But I used it as a chance to sit down and learn some 100% stuff too while I was right there. Hell, I practice upside down just Sindhu just because there might be a time that I do need it. I hope not. I took no damage in that spot. That was like the perfect spot for that. Wow, killer doing damage list? No. Also, it doesn't I matter. Got hit. It saves two seconds overloading. Oh, there's no. Wait. I thought there was one there. I might be dumb. No, you for gore. So it's like. Yeah, it might be good to like learn the backtrack movement for Smog, but like you don't need it until the top level. Like I technically didn't even I think I started doing it around like twenty six level or something like that. Alright, time to fight that guy. But also a lot of the things that I do, I kind of also just grind monkey the brick out of. Yeah, well you you're a person that gets dedicated to what they're doing at that moment. If you get invested in, like, Todd 100%, you're gonna grind it out until you're satisfied. Yeah. Like, the mindset that I have is as long as I keep working towards a goal, I will see it through eventually. Even if it's 1% per day, I will eventually see that 100%. Wait. It's not a bad mindset. It's not a good mindset. But it works for you. Honestly, that's perfectly fine, Nick. It, like... It's a thing where you kind of often have to factor in your enjoyment of it, and like, if it just doesn't feel good, no one's forcing you to play. Your time will still be right there when you come back. Maybe yeah. the... maybe your goal will be different, but... I right. think that the thing that more people need to, like, know is that... You're not obligated to run a certain thing. The only way I think someone's obligated to run something is... It, it's quite literally their job. Why did I think I'm going to that? But even then, some people that say, you, you could go back to GC, you'd still have an audience. If I do go 100% per day, this one will be very slow. True, I'm also at that point spending 100 days in one sitting. Yeah, that's just I called high old speed runs. I have enough for a full. Yes, so, yeah. Give me, give me a Yato. Not a book. I have one Primo on my Asia yeah, account. Yeah, like, in that sense, I do think there are technically some obligations, which are like, if you're running in a marathon, yeah, you're gonna want to be de-rusted for it. But, I, I'll counter that and say, if you're in a marathon, you're, you signed up for that. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean, like, you're technically obligated to, do, to like, at least... See the run you're out. Fine, you're, you're asked to perform the run at a level that, like, again, that you have some level of going to it. So in that sense, yes, I can see that there is an obligation there for that. But if you sign up, it's your choice to sign up. Yeah. And so you can't blame the obligation on it. No. Yeah. 
depends when you were grinding Dragon into Cluster Three. They played six hours or so minimum. Yeah, it's kind of like what I did. It's like I grinded the fuck out of top. Like yes, I did a lot of any percent first, but AGB is really just any percent with extra steps. And in that sense, like I felt confident going into it, and then the relay run crashed all my confidence. But I broke through. I also broke my mic in the process too. Oh no. But you had fun during it, didn't you? No. The relay itself was pretty cool. My run was an absolute travesty. But after all of it, did you have fun? Oh, I was burnt up about that run clearly for months. Like, it actually had made such a terrible mental block for me in AGB. That's why my pop-off was so cathartic. I love how the song playing right now is I'll face myself. That's what the little speedrunning is. <laughs> <laughs> like, in speedrunning, the only person you have to worry about is yourself. Oh. Yeah. 100%. Every speedrunner will tell you that. <sighs> I do think the mental game of speedrunning is something else that I think is a very interesting topic to go on about. Because it's why I hold the opinion that like this is a hobby that anyone can do. It just comes down to how much cool. do you want to see it out. Got the stagger. The only mental block is your own. Dang. You've been meaning to tell me that I've been playing with building blocks the whole time? <laughs> You've been playing with Duplos. You gotta pump out the Legos, killer. Time for the big boy toys. Out the neck. Out my other neck. Ah, the two neck man. Yeah, I think I've reached a point now in this game where I feel very comfortable with my skill level. And that's not to say that I feel, like, complacent, but rather that I feel like I've actually been seeing, like, pretty decent growth in the run. Yo, hey, you the gel. We're in your VC if you want to hop in. Nah, if he joins, he'll ask for the burger. It's like, freaking PayPal him the money or something for the burger. <laughs> PayPal him ten dollars for burger. Great five shortly until your sister arrives. Yo. Uh, why game no give good artifacts? All right, let's beat up the big last boss. Don't talk about me like that. Spoiler free. Spoiler free final boss. I'm the final boss. I am always the final boss. Me, kill a Lombax. Yeah, actually kill a Lombax is the final boss. The Lombax and Kirby. Who knew the crossover we didn't need, but we wanted. I feel like he'll say it enough. Yo, what's up, Nick? What, that I'm the final boss? Honestly, thank you. I, I'm actually very proud of it as well because, like, I think, right, I think something like GC helped, like, myself from the tech skill perspective of it. I think this game has taught me a lot mentally of the runner. And, like, this broke some mental blocks that I've had as a runner. And it also taught me as well that I don't, I'm not 
pigeonholed into a single game. <sighs> okay. Shit, I forgot to... Uh, I have no idea uh, if this is golden or not. Yeah. It became this. I was like, I'm gonna grind any percent until I feel pretty decent at the time. And then it started to be sub out, and I'm like, I'm gonna grind this until I get like a, I don't know, like a 57. And then I got like a 57, and I'm like, shit, I gotta go for record, I guess. What am I doing? I gotta die. My big boom. The other thing that happened with like DC is I don't think I was also in a disciplined enough state to want to like improve more. I need to darken this color source again. So I think this game is definitely something that taught me a lot of discipline as a runner. Cool. That is a way better. I think better. Kind of like show some things for me in GC. Yeah. 